Hi everyone, this is Priya Shadas from Crackzad presenting you the seventh episode of Blitz Brigade. Now here we will be dealing with algebra part one. So I assume that the basics of algebra is already covered and known by you. When I say basics, I mean how to add the algebraic equations, how to subtract them, how to multiply them. But the real part occurs when you have to divide the algebraic equations. And especially when you are dividing by a monomial, that is one term, it's not very hectic. But when you divide it by a polynomial, then it is a hectic process. So to overcome this hectic process today in this video, with the help of the questions, we will be learning remainder theorem. And with that, we will also be learning about the factor theorem. And lastly, we'll also go and check it out. What is synthetic theorem or synthetic method? Okay, synthetic division method. So we will cover these three primary things in the video with the help of some questions. Remember, I will just reiterate the purpose behind the video. This is my notes, my, my things which I have kept intact because I feel that these type of questions will enhance or strengthen up my foundation with the help of which I can crack any question upwards. So let's go and try this question on your own. We will do it the way you people were doing it earlier. Take a screenshot of the question, try it out on your own, give yourself one minute and if you are not able to reach to the answer as well, no problem, just check out the process I use. So the base of the triangle is given to you and the area is given to you. So this question is not just asking you to divide certain things, but it also requires the knowledge of the formula for the area of a triangle. And when we are calculating the area of a triangle, the formula goes as A is equals to, that is area is half into base into height. Now if this is my area out of which one variable is there and the others are already given. So, so the base is given, the area is given, 1 by 2 is a constant, so we need to calculate the height. So when we have to calculate the height, my real formula becomes height is equals to, the 2 will go here, 2a divided by b. So basically whatever area is given to me over here, I will multiply it with a constant 2 and then divide that equation by b. That is the base. Okay. So uh, what I'm going to do here is let me go and multiply this value and show you. So this will be a quick uh, revision for those who are not sure whether they remember the algebra multiplication or not. So this is my equation right here and I'm going to multiply it with 2. So we are only going to multiply the numerical coefficients because it's a constant here. So we'll make it as 4x cubed plus 2x squared minus 14x and minus 12. This is the area into 2 value with me. That is the numerator of my formula. Now when I go to the denominator, that is b, it remains constant. So basically I have to divide this equation by this. So I'm going to show you the division process, the normal division process. Remember that you should also or rather I should say always remember or know the actual process before you get down to any theorem or shortcut method because sometimes the shortcuts might not work but the original method if you know might be time taking but will ensure your one mark in that. So let's do it. Let's divide. Okay. So I am starting off with dividing this equation. So my dividend would be 4x cubed plus 2x square minus 14x minus 12 and my divisor will be the base. So there you go, 2x square plus 5x plus 3. Now, when we start with the division process, my sole purpose should be to find out what should I multiply with this first term of the divisor to get the first term of the dividend. So as the question I asked you, 2x square needs to be multiplied with another 2x so that you get a 4x cube. Am I right? So this 2x will become the first part of my quotient. And the moment I do this, remember in the normal division process also, we are expected to multiply the entire quotient with the entire divisor. So if I multiply 2x with 2x square plus 5x plus 3, then I will be getting a 4x cube plus 10x plus 6x, which I am going to write, which I am going to write right down here, plus 10x square plus 6x. Now, 
the time is to subtract them so if i am subtracting them i will be changing the signs of the uh, polynomial at the bottom and plus minus will cancel off i will be left with a minus 10 and a plus 2 which is minus 8x square and this is a minus 20x now again we will repeat the same process i will try to multiply something with 2x square so that i get a minus 8x square and that number can be minus 4 so if i multiply minus 4 with 2x square plus 5x plus 3 then i will be getting a minus 8x square minus 20x and minus 12 so if i just okay also remember that you have to always bring down the entire equation below so if i bring down the entire equation below and write over here as minus 4 so writing that i will get over here a minus i'm um, minus 8x square minus 20x and minus 12 if i change the signs i will get a zero sab kuch cancel ho jayega so therefore i get the value of my height which is the quotient of this expression as 2x minus 4 option c so this is the general basic method agar aapko ye method aata hai then very good you can solve any division based algebra question moving next to the question number 2 which is going to test your factorization skills so there's a shortcut of factorization guys which i want to share with you people using this question so when it comes to match the followings over here like you have to find out ki ye factorize kaise hoga so take the two extreme ends the two extreme ends and their numerical coefficient. What are the two extreme ends here? X square and 6. What are the numerical coefficients? This has a numerical coefficient as 1 and this has a 6. Now, if you multiply 1 into 6, you get a 6. That is a positive 6. And you would use this value to break down minus 5x. That means what should you multiply? Okay, in a kind of uh, or you should rather say how should you break minus 5x? So that on multiplying those numbers, you get back a 6. Meaning, if I can, if I try, if I can uh, try, I can break it in this part, isn't it? Minus 2x, minus 3x, when they are added, they give you a minus 5x only. But when they are, their, their numerical coefficients are multiplied, they give you a 6, minus 2 into minus 3. So therefore, the perfect division or rather the shortcut here is something which is both minus 2 and minus 3 so a goes with a 4 okay that's one process of doing it another try let's try the another question here again you see that this is 1 this is 6 so again i need a positive one but here the 5x is positive so instead of taking a minus 2x minus 3x i would go for a plus 2x and a plus 3x so the value should be x plus 2 and x plus 3 and if you find it, you find it over here. So therefore, B goes with 1. All right. Moving next to C, if you see this is minus 6 and plus 1. So if you multiply minus 6 plus 1, you get a minus 6. And you have to get a negative x out of it. Negative x means here the value of 3 should be negative and 2 should be positive. If that happens, what will happen? If I have a minus 3, and I have a plus 2, I will get a minus 1, which is my minus 1x, if I take it like this. So, therefore, minus 3 into plus 2 would give me a minus of 6 only, which is what I required. So, one value should be minus 3 and another value should be plus 2, which is option 2. So, C goes with a 2. And the last one is where this is negative, but the inside one is positive and that can only happen when 3 is positive and 2 is negative. So that's quite understood. This is how you are supposed to factorize using a shortcut. This is not the general method, guys. This is a Moving to question 4, I expect you to take a screenshot of it and try it on your own and then get started. So in this, you would actually use up a lot of equations and you will actually use a lot of theorems also. So with this one expression or with this one question, I can explain you both the uh, process of remainder theorem and factor theorem. Because 1 is a factor and 1, when you divide this by x minus 2, you get a remainder of 4 meaning we can use it directly now let me tell you remainder theorem and factor theorem works only when the power of the divisor is one 
okay so we cannot use it when the divisor was something like in question number one so how to use this the very simple theory is they say that equate the value of the divisor to zero and get the value of x from there so if i get the value of x as minus 2 in the case of the first one which is x plus 2 that means if i put the value of x as minus 2 over here i should get the remainder as 0 because it's a factor right it completely divides it but when it comes to this number that is x minus 2 equals to 0 i get the value of x as 2 and when i put the value of x as 2 in the same expression i should get the remainder as 4 instead of 0 so let us make the two equations based on this only and get the values of a and b from there so let's get started my equation is a x square so a multiplied with minus 2 cube plus b multiplied with minus 2 square plus minus 2 which is x minus b equals to 0 because this is the condition when i'm putting x is equals to minus 2 and the remainder coming out is 0 because it's a factor doing this i will get an expression of minus 8 a plus 4b minus 2 minus b which can be further equation you know, simplified into minus 8a plus 3b minus 2 equals to 0. This is my equation number 1 friends. Then I will go to my equation number 2 where I will put the value of x as 2 and equate that to 4. So, sub could same rahega except for the fact that when 2 is raised to the power of 3 you get a plus 8a plus 3b plus 2 because ye sirf x tha to ye plus 2 ho jayega and this will be equals to 4. This is my equation number 2. Now as you know that when you are solving the simultaneous equations at that point of time you are going to get rid of one of the variables. So out of the two variables a and b if I directly add these two equations I would easily get rid of a because that will become a 0 minus 8 plus 8. But when it comes to the other part 6b minus or plus 0 is equals to 4 is now my final equation. If I equate it further, then I will get the value of 6b is equals to 4 and that means b is equals to 4 by 6 which is 2 by 3. So, if you guys can see, I have already got my answer and that is b equals to 2 by 3. There is only one equation which is uh, supporting this value. But always remember that you should always confirm your answer before you do that. Okay. So, if you see, there is only one expression which has a 2 by 3. So, you should go with this answer. But, but, but. Just to tell you how to get the value of A, you are supposed to put the value of B in any one of the equations, okay, 1 or 2 and get the value of A which will come out to be as 0. You can try it on your own guys and therefore the answer of this question will become option A, 0 and 2, comma, 2 by 3. Okay, this is how you do this question. Here we use the remainder theorem as well as factor theorem. Now, the last question for the day and the very interesting one, how to solve the synthetic division question. So, this method is again going to be useful when you are dividing by a divisor which is having power as equals to 1. Now, this is one very tricky method. So, this can help you get the answers faster. So, I think that you have this process pata hona chahiye, irrespective of whether you use it or you don't use it. So, make a column, okay, make as many columns as many terms you have, like you have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 terms. So, make 4 columns so that you can write it across. Then make 3 rows, row number 1, row number 2 and let's say this one will be the row number 3. Now what we are supposed to do in the first row is that we are going to write down all the numerical coefficients of my dividend. Okay. So what are the numerical coefficients I have here starting from x to the power 4? I have 1, I have 4, I have 3, I have minus 4 and I guess one more is needed here. I have minus 4 again. Alright, then I have to find out a multiplier for myself and multiplier is again nothing else but the value of my x minus 1 equated to 0. That means if I equate it, I get the value of x as 1 and my multiplier becomes 1. Okay, when my multiplier is 1, I am supposed to do the synthetic division by keeping a 0 in the first column second row ye mandatory hai ye first step hai you keep a zero below it okay and add that up you get a one and then yaha se continued chain dekhne ko milta hai where you will multiply this value with the multiplier and write it 
over here that is your second column second row 1 into 1 is 1 you add that up you get a 5 and you repeat the process 5 into 1 is 5 this sum is 8 8 into 1 8 the sum is plus 4 4 into 1 is 4 and you get a 0 over here now you would say ma'am how are these numbers going to be useful to me because you are dividing a power of 4 with a power of 1 and that means that you will be starting the value 1 power less then this coefficient will go for x to the power 3 this will go for x to the power 2 and this will go for x and this one will be x to the power 0 which is none other than your constant okay so your answer would come out to be as x cube plus 5x square plus 8x plus 4 and this is none other than the answer of your question what was the real question that the area of a rectangle is given to you and the width is given and we know that if we divide the area by the width we get the value of the length and this is none other than your length so this is one synthetic division method you can try three four questions in this category and once you gain the speed you would realize that this is one of our fastest method to get the answers if you found this video useful guys please hit that like button and comment below also share this video with more and more folks i'll come with more such videos do comment below and let me know how did you find the remainder theorem factor theorem and synthetic division and kya aisa laga ki school mein bhi ye samajh aa jata to acche marks aa jate all right uh, with this i will wind up the video thank you so much for joining in guys i'll see you in the next one till then take care and study hard